What is up, YouTube? So I'm here with another crazy true crime reaction. Now this video is by Extra Insanity. Shout out to them. And this video is titled, Farmer Kills Neighbor and Records Everything. Now this video has been out one day and it has 126k views, 1.9k likes. This video has got to be good. You know, this got to be a good video. So let's get right into it. Um, not too much to be said. Like, comment, subscribe. I hope you all are enjoying the content. Respect for everyone who's here. And prayers for everyone who's been in either one of those hurricanes. Let's get right into this video. I need me my headphones on real quick. Let's go. It's just one thing after another. <laughs> Man, but he's a friend of mine. Sure. You don't get rid of friends. Yeah, just, just those two boots out there, they're brand new. Like they're, they've only been out there. They're, they're the same color leather as your boots. And they're the same ones he wears. So we're just curious of why his boots would be out there. Same size he wears. They've only been out there probably for a day or two. This is James Brenner, a 60 year old farmer living in Utah. The middle of nowhere in Utah. It's May 30th, 2022, and police just arrived at the property of James's neighbor, Dylan Rounds. 19-year-old Dylan mysteriously disappeared just two days before, and police are trying to figure out just what happened. They naturally start by talking with the man living on Dylan's property, James Brenner. He might have threw him out. I just want to say, like... So I live in Quebec where it's like boreal forest everywhere. Having this much as crazy, that actually just looks insane to me. Like you can step up on a, on like a step ladder and see the whole state. <laughs> yeah, maybe he did. Well, he, does he know that's a dump out yeah. there? Yeah. He does? He's got electronics and shit in there. Like I say, he was here. He had to have been here. Brought the truck here. Yeah. Huh, that would make sense. This van yours? Can I look in it? Uh, I already did. Oh, did he? Yeah, okay. I okay. wish you would because I got mushrooms dry in there, and every time you open the door with the wind blowing, they blow all over. What kind of mushrooms? Oh, they're not the not the kinds that get you high. Dang. They're the ones that uh, I get down at the uh, grocery store. Oh, yeah. 99 cents uh, on sale. Yeah. And I love mushrooms in the wintertime. I can't get just dehydrated. And then when I uh, get just some hot water. That one's pretty cool. Yeah, no, if they've already looked, I'm not going to open it. So, okay, well, we'll still be here for a while to look around and see if. They said his phone pinged. I, I don't understand it. His phone pinged down there. Well, 15.12 miles from Booking Tower. So, I mean. Yeah, so, I, I mean, but 15.12 miles can be a lot of places, right? You could draw a radius, and anywhere on that radius could be 15.12 miles. Bro, this guy already looks guilty. If I was this cop, just the way his eyes are and stuff, like, I'd be suspecting something. And, bro, I'm just going to make a guess right now. Given this guy's age and how he is and where he lives, I don't think he understands technology too much, and that's probably what's going to get him. That's what gets a lot of people nowadays for these things. They don't realize just having your phone in your pocket while you do something is going to put you at the scene. But this is his fuel truck, huh? Yep. It's, well, he's buying it? Yeah, he's buying it. And I think the fuel is... I want to go check it out. I don't know. Deal. <laughs> yeah, that's... You look in there. I'm going to check that out right now. Too. Don't tell his grandpa. <laughs> Alrighty. So Dylan got some new boots, I guess. But... This is Dylan's father, Justin Rounds. Justin is suspicious about James and felt something was off about him before Dylan's disappearance. That guy he's been working for. So that he's saying that, like that used to be a dump, and it's all. I guess it's buried in. He says Dylan's buried a lot of stuff out there. Do you know anything about that? 
like electronics or something like that. I, I don't so, understand though. Why would Dylan just be burying electronics out there? That doesn't make it like. First of all, you just throw them in the fucking dump, and second of all, like, who throws out good electronics? And I mean, I'm just gonna say it doesn't look like this guy's got like a shortage of space. Circuit boards. Dump it there, all the places. Right. So he said that Dylan knew that as a known dump. So what's Dylan's relationship with this place? The Dan Iverson guy said he gave him a check and then $30,000. For the work he's doing? Oh, well, he's doing it with his own machinery. My son, he's taking oh. machinery. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, was, I was like, geez, I want to work for that guy. Not that he's making a lot of money because he's buying his fuel and stuff, you oh, know what sure. I mean? And buying the tractor and the fill, all that. Sure. Not Dan. Right. Makes sense. And he says, this. Jim guy says that Dylan has been in town or whatever, brag about what money he makes and this and that. But I talked to him. It doesn't really sound like this. But you know, I've, I've been around a lot of these and I didn't know, I didn't think he drank. He heard of Thursdays and stuff like that. So this guy was saying that drinking might change how he talks, you know what I mean? So I don't know, I'm not saying it. But Dan said that doesn't sound at all like a good fucking fight. It just, I just want to shot to be straight, whatever happens. I have, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you. As much as we can tell you, right? I mean, so. If it turns into a big investigation, we can, we, we can't just, because we might not hold the answers. And if I tell you, you know what I mean? If I tell you something, then it turns out to be something else. So I'm on my way back from Vegas. You gotta call in Fillmore, Utah. My ex-wife wanted to talk to me and my daughter. My heart's not here then. Not even. Because it Do you, I don't, I never talked to her. You ever. never talked to her. You don't have a relationship. With, you know what I mean? Sure. So, right then, my heart's not, you know what I mean? Like, I thought my youngest would get a guitar back or something weird. Because yeah. she don't talk to me. Despite the lack of evidence leading to any clues about Dylan's location, Justin was adamant about solving whatever happened to his son, marking the start of Justin Round's multi-week search to find Dylan. Hold on, I just want to go back to that picture. That's a crazy picture, okay? Like, Dylan. There is nothing, and this is like, you are here, this mountain range is like miles and miles away. And there's nothing, like, I would like this, but like, I mean, I like forest and stuff. I'd like to be that alone with forest all around. But that's, I guess that's pretty cool. But I mean, it, it seemed a bit depressing just to see nothing. It's crazy. You are, like, nobody is around, bro. You could do anything and nobody's hearing you, bro. Like, look at this road. There is not another single dwelling around this whole road. Not a single car looking like it's on this road. This is really the middle of nowhere. Holy. Just hours after the previous body cam footage, Justin decides to take things into his own hands and talk to James. And that's the thing too, like I'm gonna say this really quick. It's not like the greatest place to hide a body because if you're looking in that area, it's not that hard to surveil an area. Like, if it was all forest there and you hit a body, it'd be a lot different. Because you're not going up on the helicopter and looking. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, crazy. James himself. Here, James would point his finger at a man named Ty Corbin and claimed if anyone knew where Dylan went, it would be him. So with this new information, Justin would give Ty a call. This is Justin Rounds, Dylan's dad. I talked to a guy named James and said they call you. Yes, sir. Let me go inside okay. really quick. Okay. Uh, are you by yourself, Mr. Rounds? I am, well, I've got one of my good buddies here that I've known since I was a kid. Okay. You're not around the Wadsworths at all, correct? No, right now? no, I'm not. Not even close. Okay. Uh, I've lived in that area. I remember when the Wadsworths come to town. First off, I want to tell you that I, I feel for you. I'm sorry your son's missing. I really am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe the Wadsworths are involved. Okay. By everything I've read and seen, 
I'm pretty sure someone that it has to be someone that knows him. Yes. It's someone, it's someone that knows that Lucien area really well. Yes. It's someone that knows Montello really well. Yes. And the only person that fits that profile is Kurt. And okay. between you and I, I'm not trying to offend you, but it's uh, kind of common knowledge that Kurt and your son were living at the saddle sore in that side room and in the back trailer for about the last year, year and a half off and on. Not all the time, but off and on. Okay. Kurt knows. I, I, I would ask Kurt to go in and take a lie detector test. Okay. It's, yeah, I don't don't search that that area out, Lucien. He knows that Lucien area very well. By he used to farm out there with a the guy named Marshberger. Yep. And and another farm out there that he worked on was from uh, Kurt Robertson. So he knows that area really well. Okay. And if those boots were found out there, he put them there. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Kurt's kind of a conspiracy theorist guy. No, I, 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 kinda... don't, I don't. I don't know if you're familiar with that Pilates 411 missing things, but it always says they find boots or clothes nicely folded. They, no explanation. If they, this is what I think happened, and I hope this stays between you and I. Uh, those guys for the last few weeks have been running around trying to catch people thieving like chase. Uh, another person that they were trying to catch was Robert Avilas. Yep. Uh, the Lees, the Lee boys, Robert and Toby Lee. Yeah. And th those guys are all ripoffs, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. But they've been packing guns with them and drunk. And I think that it's more apt that they were out doing that and had an accidental discharge of some sort inside your son's vehicle. And then your son being out at Lucien and somebody walking up on him and being able to harm him. You can see people at Lucien coming from four miles away. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar with that. And just that the whole ground was power washed and everything. Uh, Kurt was the only person I knew in that whole area that had a power washer, and I'm sure he brought it out to your son's place. My son had a power washer out there. Okay. I didn't know that, but they had a power washer right next to the cowboy bar for a long time, too. Okay. Kurt is very Kurt is very familiar with that area. The smells of them. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm trying to help you. I I, I really feel for you. I'm sorry that this happened. Yeah. Uh, don't expect anything from the Elko County Sheriff's. We've had people hurt out there, people shot. I could tell you a story about a girl we found fifty yards outside of town. She was murdered and they didn't do a thing about it. So I hear. According to Ty, a man named Kurt Wadsworth had to be responsible. See, I don't understand this. This is why I go back to, like, my consistent saying there's problems with American policing. There clearly is. And I have people push back, and they're like, oh, well, our police department has an MRAM. Every police department in the Western world has that. And they have more stuff that your police department doesn't have. And they also have, like... The, the, the biggest part where you need to invest in a police officer is their equipment and their training, right? Police officers in almost the rest of the world have to go to college for years before they can go to the police academy, like, with the police department. In the U.S., it's not like that. Then you hear, oh, they just find a girl dead and, like, don't even investigate, right? The only place stuff like that happens in Canada is, like, native reserves, and the only reason that happens is because of, like, the racism and the bullshit that's gone on there. There's no, like, regular towns in Canada where, like, a body gets found outside of it and the police get to go, oh, I'm not going to look into it. It just doesn't, like, really happen. Like, like, is there a fluke off of here and there? Yeah, but there's no rumor, like, oh, yeah, people die here and the, the police don't do anything here. Brother, that, would, that whole police department would be done. Done, 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 done. Sheriffs here, whatever, they're elected, but we don't have that here. ...responsible for the disappearance of Dylan. He would go on to claim that Kurt was known to have groomed children in the past and that local residents in the town had seen Kurt wearing lipstick at a bar. This would officially mark the first potential suspect associated with this case. Keep in mind, at this point, it's unknown if Dylan is alive or deceased. These claims by Ty are simply theories at this point and are not backed by concrete evidence. Everybody has these preconceived notions of oh, what I, you I, are. Multiple detectives, probably 10 or more, and FBI. Yeah, I, I talk to people that matter, 
know. But, you know, it, it sucks to be slandered by a bunch of people that don't know shit. So, whatever. How did you see Dylan? Like, how did you view him, like, as a person? I just, a hardworking young kid who had a dream, and I wanted, you know, he, he asked me to be involved in it. And I just, there was a backhoe operator, it was all in the beginning. I just want to go out there to dig a 1,400 feet of uh, main line and back, put the line in and back through it. And I was supposed to be out of there. It just went on since I uh, started last March. He would, he was, he would sleep in his camper sometimes, like when he didn't want to go home, but not with you. No, no, we were never, never sleeping there together. I, it's, I wouldn't want to stay there with him. It's too tight. <laughs> Following Justin's call with Ty, another potential suspect would be named Chase Venstra. Chase was a known drug addict and criminal of their town, Montello. A rumor around town began circulating that Chase, as well as another known criminal, Robert Aviles, may have kidnapped Dylan. Phone records show Dylan and Chase were together in the desert the day Dylan went missing, and coincidentally, it was Dylan's first time meeting Chase. Unfortunately, Chase was nowhere to be found. It's like I said, you know, nobody's in trouble. We're just trying to find oh, this okay. kid. Do you guys know Chase? Uh, we know Abby. He steals. Yeah, that's what we. What about Dylan? Do you guys know Dylan at all? Uh, never heard of him. Chase. Yeah. So Chase. Bro, these parts of America are really third world country looking. Like it's crazy. I, I, I feel for these people having to live like this. I hope they make the most of their life. Is that on that ranch out there? Is that what you're saying? Somewhere out there. Okay. Because um, the, he was supposed to be in Idaho. And somebody seen him out there. Okay. How long ago do you know? About a week now. Okay. Wasn't it when, because they was looking for um, Robert Avia. What does Chase drive? You guys know? Last I seen was driving a motorhome. What did it look like? Was it like the size of that or was it a great big one? About the size of that, yeah. About the size of that there? Coyote on the side. Okay. okay. And there's a place before you get to the ranch that has got trees around it. I We used to call it the Kramers. I don't know what they call it now, but there's that creek and everything out there. All right, well, we'll run out there. Thing we need to know about either. Well, you don't know Dylan, obviously, but Chase. Huh. Other Chase, than he's a um, he threatens if the cops come yeah, after yeah, him, he's, he's gonna get. He's gonna shoot, have a shootout. Did he steal the guns? I don't know. That's just what I've heard. Yeah. Is they uh, using? Does he use drugs? Uh, probably. Because people he hang, hung around with before. And if anybody in town really knows where he'd be, it'd be at the Cowboy. We just came from there. Okay, yeah. or um, out at Paul's Ranch, Paul's place outside of town. Is that the one with all the cars and everything around it? Yeah. Have all the junk? That's where Chase would be? That's who he used to hang around with. Does he use Paul. drugs, Paul? Uh, probably. Okay. I know he drinks a lot, so. Okay. okay. Well, you guys just keep going. Yeah. We're, we'll go do our thing and you guys just be safe. Okay. Yep, okay. we're just, okay. yeah, we're, we're just looking we're around for him, so. If you're here. No, that's good. I'm sure that most people probably know if we stopped at the bar. With police having difficulty tracking Chase down, Justin wants to go to Robert Aviles' house under suspicion Chase could be living with them. Bro, there Justin. is nothing in this. Holy shit, there is like nothing. And would need a search warrant to search around Robert's property, so he would call the police to help further investigate. All right, guys, so this is this is the family. Yes. yes. Okay. So tell me again what you have suspicion to okay, believe so, right now. So, okay, so, I the film last, the, so on 525 is when Dylan ran into Chase with the desert and called in the desert and called me right after. He had no shoes on. Dylan wouldn't let him take his phone or give him a ride, but he did allow him to call his dad on speakerphone in Ogden, Utah. Okay. To, Dylan allowed Chase. Dylan allowed Chase to, and then he gave him some coke, and his and then his dad called Dylan back, and Dylan sent the pin from his phone to where Chase was. Okay. So then we fast forward to 528, which was Saturday. Dylan was heard from in the morning. He talked to his grandma, and he was going to take the grain truck to the shed to put it in shelter because it was raining. Okay. So at this point, we assumed he was walking back across the desert to his camper because okay. he didn't have a ride. So then 529, they continued to look for him. 530, we all got here um, 
to Dylan's last known location in Loop Sin, filed the police report, got search and rescue out. That's the night we found Dylan boots about 400 yards from where his last known location was tossed out behind a dirt pile, just okay. out. That's when Kurt called me and from local talk around and how it all got through the circle, we know that this Robert guy took Chase out to the desert where Dylan is the day Dylan went missing. Okay. Chase. That's that's as far as we know. And, and that's the day Dylan also went missing. The same day he met the Chase. Day, and, the, yeah. No, the same day that Robert t drove Chase out there in the yeah, little black that car. that day, not the day... Mm -hmm. Chase. Yeah. That was when. Where do we we believe he's with in Robert's house right now? We, Is that what we're thinking? We're spec. That's our speculation. And if he's not, we know this Robert guy knows what has happened to him or where he's been. What does Dylan look like? Oh, here. Show him a picture. He's. Anyway, uh, Tom Hardy's going to tell me that Robert took Chase. Um, Lentz, uh, whatever his last name is, the Lentz. Ben, Benstra. Benstra took him out to, he's the one, I, I, he didn't even know Dylan was missing. Okay. So, he just brought it up in, mm -hmm. in a conversation, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, he's, he knows we're always it's how, it's keeping how, it's an how, eye yeah. out for Chase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, he's always got something. He, he has warrants. Uh, then out for us? Chase does? Oh, yeah. Be well, how come Stevens didn't pick him up last Tuesday? Because he doesn't have, he has, I'm sorry, he doesn't have warrants out of Nevada. Oh. Yeah. Hey, so... We're standing outside of the, uh, the, yeah, the saddle store. Yeah, we're standing outside the saddle store. There's a group of people here, a bunch of family members. Uh, so the phone was pinged out here. They have reason to believe that uh, Chase Venstra and that other gentleman, that he might be in the house. So we're waiting for you uh, and then more backup before we go and approach that. Okay, cool. We'll be right here. All right, sorry. You'll see us. Right, so the, even the owner's out here. He's not in the building or any sort. Their uh, their kid Dylan, they got their uh, they went and checked his campground. He's gone. They said supposedly Dylan's missing. gone. Dylan's gone. Missing. He, they're they're concerned that uh, if we go knock on the door and they have very strong belief that they're that he's in there, uh, they want to kind of take it off on their own. You know, so it's kind of. Uh, I have a picture of Dylan that they sent me. That's Dylan. So do we put out a missing here in Nevada now or no? No. Uh, it's, 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 it's hurting. It's, it's, it's in there. Or, uh, yeah, what so about? Do you ever okay. run them? Yeah. Anytime you run them, they'll come up on his driver's Okay, yeah, that's what they said. Um, I don't know if Chase still has his phone number. The phone he used last Tuesday. Okay. You guys were out here and Stevens had, you know, whatever. But I'm going to have that in just a second and I'll... Uh, Chase's phone Chase's number? Chase's phone number, yeah. If he'd even answer our phone. That dude might have skipped town. He jumps. Yeah. All around. All over. Town. Yep. All the way in Pilot Valley. With this information, police would drive to Robert's home. Supposed to be hanging out with a guy named Chase and Robert. And Robert. Okay, I don't know. Chase might have an idea, but my son's been homesick, okay. and he's been in bed all day, and he's been home all night. I don't know. I'm just wondering. So who's all you in know? your house? Who, Nobody. Who? Nobody's in there right now. No. Nobody's here right now. Right. My son is in his trailer. And where's that and at? In the backyard. In the backyard? Yeah. And he's sleeping because he was sick all night. Okay. And I'm just wondering uh Well, what's we're just happening. trying to we're just trying to find and out what this no, kid no is. one came home with him. So. Nobody came home with him? No. Okay. Is Chase here? No. I don't let Chase on my property after I found him inside my home when I was at home. Do you know where okay. Chase is staying at? Um somewhere out that way, I guess. Like in the middle, like just like on. Yeah. In, in a field, living well, in a field in a camper? In, is that what we're talking, or is it? Yeah, I guess so. Just out past the railroad track somewhere out there. Okay. I don't know, really. Uh, that's just what I hear. I have no freaking idea. I just want to know what's going on. 
Yeah. And why they keep chasing my son around. Who's they? Who's uh, they? The wads on some wads other guy wads? pointed a gun in my freaking wads? face. When? When? Uh, a couple m months ago. And I told him to get the fuck out of here, too. And I said, don't come over here. We're not at your house bugging you. You stay the fuck away from me. I don't want people bugging him. He just got out, and he's having a hard time adjusting to the outside world. And no one's going to harass him. Okay. No okay. one. No, I don't no, give no. a damn. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. We're not here to harass We're not him. here to harass we were we were told that there's possibly a kidnapping. missing kid. Oh, being here. here. Yeah, yeah, no. Hosted, you can feel free to si look around. Hostage if situation? Like, like he's not being no, held? Uh, I, see, that's why we're here, ma'am. I mean, no. so that, we're, not that's, here to harass. we're not here to harass. But we got to report that somebody's being so held hostage. I thought it was about the car. Oh, God, no, you know, no, it's not I'm about like, a car. Okay, the car. I know. I got to get it back. <laughs> I will. When this I can is get not to about it. a car. This is not about a car. You can look around if you want to. How long have you lived out here, ma'am? All my life. I have you? Yes. I See, was born and raised in Wendover, and I've been there for a long time. You've never been a problem so because like we don't even backyard. know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> but I'm just wondering, because it's like okay. I had people chasing them around and all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to let him The search of the home was redacted to conceal private information of the Aviles, but nobody would be found inside of the home. Because I am a junk collector. So it's my mom and my aunt and my sister oh. and everyone. But yeah. this is it. <laughs> So he's been sleeping all day. Gotcha. And all night. But sorry okay. about the whole mess no, thing. No I got don't know. going on, don't I? Don't. Police would interview Robert in his trailer. The footage would be redacted due to the privacy of the Avila's personal information once again. However, the interview would be recited to Jason and Candace shortly after. So he took Chase Venstra to Lucerne yesterday and dropped him off. They said uh, there was a big tree there with like a pond or something where he dropped him off. He's saying that Chase's dad lives there in Lucerne. Um, Lucien. Yeah, I, Lucien. That's where okay. his son is. That's where your son was? Is Lucien, yes. Okay. And uh, apparently that's where uh, Chase's dad lives. That's where this guy we dropped him off. His dad lives in Ogden. Ogden? We know that. Okay. And he yeah. Well, that's what, that he, he just yeah. told that guy that yeah, probably, I'm sure, yeah. but he, he ended up, he said he did drop off. The place where he was probably off. saying with the tree at the pond is where the search and rescue is the last tonight. Yeah. Today. Okay. Now, did, there today. did he have any vehicles or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Your son? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's right at his place. Everything was accounted his for. His guns were left but, there, but the keys were out of his pickup, and his pickup was locked, and I, he never locks his pickup. I don't believe it was yesterday, because if he's admitting to taking I them out I think it's all there, a lie. I, yeah. There was no fresh fire at that pit. There's no, no. house at that water. water I don't know. Guys, well, uh, I appreciate you telling us. Guys, the guy's been under the... I'm sure he's... A, Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's uh, using dro dope and whatnot, but, uh, yeah. It seems clear that Robert's story doesn't quite make sense, and it paints Chase out to look awfully suspicious. But it still doesn't lead to any clear answers, and the list of potential suspects only continues to increase. James had Dylan's truck and boots on his property. Kurt was living with Dylan and is allegedly known to groom children. Chase was with Dylan the day of the disappearance, and his story seems to be filled with lies. Nothing makes sense. Bro, this one's a doozy, because it really could be any of those three. Like, I I think it's the first guy who we saw, but, like, it really could be any of the three. There's not really any evidence that puts one ahead of the other. Like, that's just my gut feeling. Damn. Over nine days would go by from the- Shout out to Dr. Insanity for this video. Go sub to them. It's a good video. Recording without any further leads. 
Chase would be arrested for his previous warrants. However, upon questioning, no further evidence would present itself to prove Chase responsible for Dylan's disappearance. He said that as far as he knows, uh, Chase Venstra is no longer a person of interest in uh, Dylan Brown's disappearance. Um, and that came rather as a, a shock. With such a strange case looming in their tiny town, the search for Dylan began spreading across Utah, so much so that hundreds of residents began searching for Dylan themselves or looking for any clues to help law enforcement. And on June 10th, the first major lead would be found. It's nice to see people from a town helping out like that. It's always good to have the sense of community and stuff like that. A strange pair of pants that may be correlated to Dylan in some way. Um, we're, coming, we're just coming from Wendover to come out. Just be around. We're meeting some guys that live in Wendover. Have some property in Montello. We had some ideas of some mine shafts up there. We were going to search and a few things. Okay. So we met at the gravel pond. We're starting to come this way. Me and my buddy Justin Palmer, that's the guy that followed Troy. <coughs> so we met up with them, come down here. Some other guys from Rigby, where we're from, were this at a gravel pile by the, by the pile of road. I, I don't even know the road, whatever. My, my buddy said it was a turnout. But as we were coming, the guy saw these pants. We all rushed back here. I took some pictures, sent them to show for you. We, everybody was telling everybody not to touch them, but we got a hammer to see if it was the size of Dylan, and it's not. It's a bigger size of pants, and I texted Brian that. Okay. The crutch, crotch is blown out. Nobody touched it. We just used the claws of that to kind of look, you know what I mean? So that, that's where we are. So um, we're going to get you a witness statement form to okay. fill out. Um, and then uh, we're so we only have one shot, right? Um, so we'll have you fill out the witness statement and we'll get them going, okay? okay? Unfortunately, the pants would be confirmed to not belong to Dylan. Again, the search for Dylan only led to dead ends. Oh, goodness. <laughs> This is Donald Hatley, the neighbor of James Brenner. Don informed the police that he had information that could potentially help crack the case. In this interview, Don refers to James as Jim. All right, I'll tell you something. Okay. And I, I really don't think it has anything to do with anything. Uh, you guys found ammunition and stuff with James. Yeah. Uh, things that. Black powder and things. Yeah. But he figured that would be a, a reason to poke him, so to speak, say whatever. So he brought his black powder rifle from the black box. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Where are those? Uh, I put one behind my bed, my bedroom, and the other one's leaned up in the corner next to the table on the couch. Why did he bring them? After Dylan. Oh, yeah, definitely after. Just the muzzle loader, or is there any, any other firearms? All I got was those white powder guns, two rifles, six gun. This is the last time I've seen him wearing that six gun was two years ago. Just thought he had to get it out of there. Why? Basically safety. Mm -hmm. What he told me. Well, last time, you know, they had him in holding for over a year. And when he got out, everything he had was gone. Everything. If you ever look through Jim's phone, I'm, I'm sure you guys already did, but you know, he looks at all his old gun sites and stuff and works on or like Mike's working on stuff, you know, that's one of his things, you know, all the old stuff.
Okay. Were you, was it just you and Jim that were at the barbecue? Was there anybody else that was over there? Just us. Uh, don't know anybody else but John and Kurt, really. John just got over from there. All about every Sunday when he was down here. Not so much this year. So, I can't ask you what's going through Jim's head at that time, but what's going through yours when he brings you his rifles and a six gun? Honestly, yeah. it looked like he was scared that, you know, he was going to be detained for six months or a year and lose everything he had. He said, well, I'll never see my dog yet. She's old. And I had no idea what happened to his horses last time. Oh, okay. All his gun, everything he owned disappeared. So why do you think he's going to get detained, or why does he think he's going to get detained for six months? Uh, well, he doesn't. He almost doesn't realize that it's a possibility because it happened in the past. Just because he's a felon and he could be held. Yeah. So he knows he's a felon. He knows he shouldn't have him. So he can well, no, I, I don't. I don't know. You know According to him. Uh, Black powder is a primitive weapon, it's not considered a firearm. Now, if they brought me a firearm, I said no. But black powder. Black powder is not a firearm. Like, it's allowed to have it's part of my life. Is that true? Are black powder guns not considered firearms in part of the US? I know here, like they have definitely different laws, like they're a little less strict with them because you know you you're not gonna go do a mass thing with them, but I wonder. Okay. Um, so sometime after, Dylan, do you remember how long after? I mean, it's only been three weeks now. That was a joke, bro. I wish I could have just gone walking down the road so I could kick his butt. I wish to. But the longer this goes, the less likely that looks. Yeah. Well, there's a case where you tell me that Dylan was there before 3 o'clock. That's like, hey. Well, I'm, I'm trying to be honest with you. I'm trying well, to tell you that, that no, make sure no, that I can. I, you know, my my whole social world just fell apart here. I, I don't. Well, one's gone, and now yeah, you don't know what and, to think about the other. Exactly, and, and if he's lying to me, and uh, you guys, uh, would he tell you if he did something? No, I, no? I don't. I don't know. I, just, this is so flipping frustrating. If you have something to do with that, it's all right. I'll go over this book and go check it out. Well, we're trying to we're trying to figure it out. Okay. Uh, again, I I really do appreciate you taking time. I know you got work to do, um, and I assume. I imagine we'll be in contact at some point about something or other, okay? Finally, police had answers. James brought multiple weapons to Don's house right after Dylan mysteriously disappeared. In the span of a few hours, James had become the lead suspect to Dylan Round's disappearance. Don would hand all three guns over to deputies, and a search of James's trailer would reveal ammunition, powder, and caps that matched all three guns. After police reviewed James's criminal history, they found several firearm-related charges, including possession by a restricted person, unlawful transport of firearms, assault with intent to murder, and malicious shooting. This allowed police to arrest- Yeah, I'm just gonna say this guy probably not even allowed to own black powder weapons. I, I don't see how he would be able to own any of that. That's crazy. James on those charges and hold him without bail. And just days later, police would discover something terrifying. Upon draining a pond near James's trailer, they would find a cracked cell phone. And when they revealed the files on the phone, they would finally have their answer. At 7.27 a.m. on May 28th, the same day as Dylan's disappearance, a time-lapse recording was made on the phone. In this time lapse, James could be seen cleaning bloodied weapons and having multiple bloodstains on his clothing. This was just 30 minutes after Dylan's last text message. It was clear. 
why in the actual fuck would you record that on your phone? Like, I kind of get, like, the crazy people recording, like, them doing something crazy to the person, like, wanting it from... But why would you just record yourself cleaning up the blood? Bro, like, why? James was a cold-blooded killer. And an and idiot. Now, police had all the evidence they could ever need to charge him with the murders. Whether James was recording this to boast his killing of Dylan or by pure accident is something we'll never know. You know what? I He might have recorded this by accident. Right? But if you... I don't know. He threw the phone away, so he had to know it got recorded. I mean, it's possible he recorded this by accident. kind of looks like he might have. I don't know. Either way, what the? Either way, that's God giving him his karma. Prayers to the family of the victim. Oh, this upon guy's questioning, creep. though, James stated that he was angry Dylan had parked in the shed that day. That's it. So you Just killed him. Mad. Upon interrogating, Ch you burned my motherfucking shit. Like what the? F you could kill someone over that? Didn't do jail. It's Venstra. Ruin families. Fuck up your family. You parked in the shed. Parked in the shed. That's the fucking reason I was mad. Uh, and Donald Hatley, it was determined that they had no involvement in the murder of Dylan Rounds table and were released. <laughs> this is the janky, like, bro, what, what, like, oh my god. Okay, so, did they, like, a diner closed down and they bought the old tables? That has to, <laughs> you get that table in there, bro. <laughs> it was determined that they had no involvement in the murder of Dylan Rounds and were released. As for James, he would plead guilty to the murder, and over two years later, James would bring police to Dylan's remains. Following this discovery, James Brenner was sentenced to up to 30 years in prison. A judge says there's oh. enough evidence to take away. Well, Sean Combs. Oh, shit. A Sorry about all that. Anyways, let's go back here. This has been another crazy video, another crazy true crime reaction. Shout out to Extra Extra Insanity, that's the name of the channel, and uh, you know, shout out to them. This has been a really good video, really crazy. Um, let me know everyone's opinions down there about this, and honestly, like I, this is just crazy. I'm glad they caught the guy. How they caught him is insane. That video is not there. They don't catch the guy. They don't know who it is. So, like, I don't know. Maybe to me that's probably like an act of God. I don't know. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash that bell so you're really subscribed. I got a bunch more content coming up. Way Wilson. True crime reactions. Some reactions to other stuff. All kinds of good content. So, let's go. I hope everyone's staying safe. I hope everyone's blessed. Uh, prayers to everyone who was involved in both those hurricanes. And I hope everyone's staying safe. Have a blessed day. Peace out.